Welcome on to another edition of Run with Coach Perry. I'm Brad. So we've got the coach with us once again. And today we're talking about cross training and not the normal cross training when it comes to running, like swimming and cycling, but uh, other sports. Lindsay, it's good to have you on. How's it? Oh, it's very good, Brad. It uh, doesn't feel like a whole week has passed since we last chatted. Yeah, absolutely. Lindsay, let's let's talk cross training. Obviously, you're a, a big fan of it, particularly t- for, for, for guys who are injury prone and, and, and to sort of build extra fitness over and above a, a running program. And often we talk about using swimming or cycling as effective uh, cross training for running. But we had a, an interesting question pop up in uh, our forums, and it was about using squash, the sport of squash, as a, as a cross-training, uh, an opportunity for cross-training. What are your thoughts on, on using other sports, maybe not the mainstream, maybe like tennis or, or, or other sorts of things as, part, as cross-training within a, within a running training program? Yeah, look, I, get, I have been asked this question a few times over the years, and um, I've got to say that there are obviously some pros and and cons. Now, one of the reasons why I like cross-training is because it changes the focus from an eccentric load or in in simple English pounding. So when when we're running, we hit the ground quite hard and there is a lengthening of the muscle as the muscle essentially is protecting our, our joints. So that, that's what's known as an eccentric muscle contraction. And the reason I like cross-training is because it allows more training without those eccentric con- contractions. So that's why I typically choose swimming and rowing, cycling, elliptical, orbit track, those type of, of things. So squash, um, tennis to a, a slightly lesser degree, um, hockey, football, these type of things, they they do provide a pretty good um, higher intensity type of workout. Uh, There's In in squash, there's lots of lunging and stepping, so there's a good um, uh, sort of strength benefit to be had for that, but they all increase that eccentric loading to, to quite a high degree. So I almost feel like Yes, there's an opportunity to do that sort of thing, especially if you enjoy it um, and it gives you a good mental break from only running. But then I would probably reduce my running load somewhere else and I would still aim to incorporate perhaps some extra more traditional cross-training or low-impact exercises into into the routine. Um, and obviously, all of these sports come with a risk. So again, it depends what you're using running for. But if you have a specific race goal in mind, you have to accept that playing tennis, playing squash, playing football, um, hockey, these all have inherent risks of turning ankles, falling, um, bruising, and you know squash court is played on a pretty hard surface so there are some some high forces going through so definitely with a sport like like um tennis or or squash i would look at reducing the load somewhere else in the week because those are very hard surfaces with very high impact um lots of short sprinting Uh, so yeah I, i would say that if running is part of a health um drive and it's more for lifestyle then of course you can incorporate those kind of things but as soon as you start focusing specifically on trying to get a 21k pb or your first marathon or marathon pb you have to understand that there are some pretty there are risks involved in doing those type of activities yeah i think a prime example is someone we had a couple of years ago Lindsay, who was uh, training for comrades he'd been training for for nine ten months in the build-up uh, and decided he was going to play some beach volleyball two weeks before race day and ended up breaking his ankle so uh that's the last thing you want to happen i think that's some some great advice there as well uh, don't forget as well if you'd like to win we are giving you the opportunity to get access three months access to the coach perry online training club all you need to do is use the hashtag biogen journey tell us what you're training for on the social medias you can use instagram twitter facebook doesn't really matter we'll find them uh, tell us what you are hoping to achieve and what you need help with and we could be making you a winner and those winners are announced on our audio podcast every single week so make sure you check that out as well Uh, and don't forget 
too. If you need help with uh, your training, be sure to check out the Coach Perry Online Training Club. Uh, head over to coachperry.com forward slash join. We've got a whole bunch of training programs. There's a very interactive forum where you get access to Lindsay and the rest of our coaching staff as well. Uh, interactive mobile app. Uh, it is fantastic. The, the URL to get to coachperry.com forward slash join. All the details are there. Lindsay, as always, great to catch up. Thanks for the advice. And we look forward to catching up again next week.